Hey everyone, this is T from Driftwood Gaming and I'm here with another effects here tutorial. Today we're going to go over chapter 7. It's called Let's Move Complicated Parent-Child Relationships. So we're going to learn about using different nodes, but not just nodes, but we're going to make one a child of the other. And we're going to do these two effects right here. So um, as you can see with this example, if you make a parent node, which is this, it is tethered in ways certain properties are inherited from that node by the child, which is the green box. So because this box particle is rotating, the uh, child node will rotate with it. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at this effect actually, and I have it open here. And we're just going to kind of deconstruct it a little bit to see what's happening. First we'll play it. And as you see, you've got these little wispy things going on here. So in order to help you understand what's going on, I'm going to get rid of almost everything. And we're just going to look at the root nodes. And as you can see, all they do is um, spawn in random sizes, and they are five spawns that move across the screen slowly. Now this move curve is added as a child node, and it's tethered. You'll see it comes from the base of the root node, and it's tethered to it, but it has a, a different move route. So we're going to take a look at that. First, let's get rid of the root node. And uh, you'll see that it uses an F curve to move. Let's move this over a little bit so we can see better. And uh, see, this is the X, this is the Y. And if you'd like, we can move this and just see how it affects the way things look. Yeah, see, you know, now the pattern's a little bit different. And you can play around with that any way you like to get the effect that you would like. All right, that's a little more like what we had before. So um, I'm not going to go too far into the F curves, but that's how this is happening. You'll notice it's like in a ribbon. So uh, see here, it shows a icon that is different than the sprite icon. This is the track icon. And what's actually happening here is each one of these root nodes is spawning multiple little tiny particles. See, I'll show you. If I just spawn five, you'll see what it looks like. As you can see, it's a lot shorter. But let's go back to 100 and now we get these long track things. So let's take a look at the other effects that are added on here. If you'll notice that this is a child of the little blocks that we're moving along the bottom, so the movement and the positioning here is based on those blocks. And now we have two children based on this F-curve thing that's happening here. So let's take a look at those. So this one has eight spawns and they are coming at different positions. You'll notice it doesn't have a set position, instead it has a deviation. So it'll spawn at a different point outside the original move curve. It'll spawn eight for each individual section that's being spawned in this move curve, which, if you'll remember, there's a hundred, so it spawns a lot of them. And then it's the same with the random stop, except for instead of random position, in the variation two, is very much like the first one. It has a few different effects, like this particle effect here. These are being spawned in random locations, and then they have random speeds and directions, so it looks like snow flying around. But that's all we're going to look at with this. I'm not going to go too far in depth, but I just wanted to show you guys how this works. So the next thing in the tutorial that we're going to do is a tornado effect. So let's open that up. That's over here. And as you can see, we already have our little our little center particle here that's doing its rotation. In order to do that, you just you just get a particle and then you go to rotation. And you set the Y angular velocity to pretty much whatever you want. It's set to 15. And then don't forget to also change it to a something other than a billboard or else it won't twirl. In this case, we're using fixed. So we would like to make a child node of this parent node in order to see how this rotation will affect our child node. So the first thing we're going to do is right click on this and add a node. This is our child node, so let's call it baby. We're going to make it spawn infinitely. And then we're also going to give it a positional deviation. And the position deviation we're going to give it is 3. So now they're spawning in different positions, but we're also going to give it a speed, 0.5. So 
So now we have these little guys rotating around the parent node, and you see that they're all being affected by the rotation of the parent node. If you don't want to see the parent node, it's easy to get rid of. You just select it, uh, and then go to this little blue box, which is render settings, and change it to none. And bye-bye, it's gone. So let's make these babies a little prettier. They're kind of ugly. Let's spruce them up a bit. I'm just gonna give it a particle effect and we're gonna do additive and then we're gonna give it some some color let's just go to color all random pick whatever color you think is best of course I picking the best color in the entire world and we're gonna make it go down to like a pink or something yeah there we go beautiful okay so as you can see we have a bunch of little child nodes that are reacting to the parent node and it gives us this like vortex tornado type effect on to the next part of the tutorial we're gonna look at a meteor effect and uh, this is just gonna show your child nodes have different types of reactions based on how long they keep the properties of the parent node so let's take a look at that I'm gonna open the project here and so we're gonna play this sample that the tutorial gives you and this shows how it looks if all the children are continually inheriting the property of the parent. And I'll show you the parent right now. You see it's just a red ball that's going in one direction. And the children are spawning near the parent at random locations, but they're also following the length of the ball. But if we change this in basic settings to inherit position, instead of using inherit position always, we're going to change this to only on create. And now you see they spawn and they have their own individual movement. It's not tethered to the parent anymore once they've spawned. So their original position when they spawn is going to be tethered to the position or in relation to the position of the parent node. But since it has been created, it's no longer tethered to or in relation to the parent node and therefore it does its thing even though the parent node's, you know, flying off the screen. You can make a whole lot of different awesome effects using these methods. I hope you learned a little something from this tutorial. This is chapter seven. Next, we'll be covering chapter eight. If you like this and uh, wanna see some more, definitely like this video, hit that bell, and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.